key that they needed as well, so they were provided for. God cared for them. God provided for them. And just as he showed himself to Moses in the bush as being fire that did not consume it, so also he revealed himself to Israel. They saw him. They knew he was there. They knew he was continuing to be with them. And at that time, it's easy to know that God is with you. It's easy to know that God is, is with you and is guiding you when things are going well. It's easy to know that God is with you and God is guiding you after a miracle. But it doesn't take very long before you forget. It doesn't take very long at all. As you look into the story, it doesn't take very long for the people of Israel to try to find another way. And thus they wander. But we're beginning our journey back to faith today. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near pi Harah, between Migdal and the sea, there to encamp by the sea directly opposite baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land of confusion hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. This is one of those challenging things that, that God asks his people to do. There be times in our lives that something seems too strange too challenging, too hard. But again, God knows when you're ready. And so God tells them to go. He tells them to go and follow, follow this, this path where the pillars are leading them. And they realize that they're in a place. And they realize that they're going to a place that's going to provide them no cover, no means of escape. They'd be penned in literally by the desert and the sea so that Pharaoh was given an opportunity to go after them. And this is exactly what God intended. God intended that Pharaoh would go after the people of Israel. And the people of Israel, I'm sure, were scared. The same ones that would have been scared to go through Philistine, they have had the same arguments. You brought us this far just to kill us? And some were ready for battle. Some were ready, they, they left ready for battle. But the reason for this, the reason for this was not for the glory of the people of Israel, but it was for the glory of God. The people of Israel had to listen because God had something else to do. God still had his judgment on the people of Egypt. He still had that judgment to put upon them. And it was to his glory. See, God did not want to know, be known simply as the God of the people of Israel. He wanted to be known as the God of the universe, the creator of the world. And he wanted the people of Egypt to know who he was. To know that he was the God of the world. And in this Easter tide, we remember as we take our journey back to faith, that Jesus Christ is not just Lord for us, for particular people, but he is the Lord of the whole world. He didn't die just for you, but he did die for you. But he died for the sins of the whole world, but he also rose again for his glory. For his glory. And God is going to challenge us too at times and give us, give us situations that we don't understand. For us, one of us was just moving down here accepting a position before the hurricane. But to come down and to serve and come anyway, even though our, the home we were going to live in was destroyed. It was a challenge. It was one that God gave and one that was for God's glory, not for ours. Everything that we do needs to be done to glorify God. It's not that it's going to be easy. It's not that this journey back to faith is an easy one. At times it will be hard. But as we enter, as we continue into this Easter tide season, we'll have these challenges that will be given to us. And they are for God's glory. Amen.